On this episode of Rust Rescue, Leanne messes with Chip and Reese while working on the body of the 1945 fire truck. This is bull. Vince replaces the rocker panels and floor pans on the 1949 Plymouth and coats the frames of both vehicles in zero rust. I'm Vince, but everybody calls me Taz. I've been building custom hot rods since I was a kid. I couldn't afford to buy one, so I learned how to build them. This is my partner, Leanne. When she's not out shopping for cars, she's racing them. Our team rescues rusty old wrecks, and we'll teach you how to restore them for just $10,000. Why are you only gonna give me $10,000? You're gonna be lucky if your wife lets you spend that much. That's true. So if you're not afraid to pick up a wrench and get your hands dirty, We'll show you the right parts, tools, and techniques to get the job done. This is Rust Rescue. We've been working on our 1945 fire truck project. We've got it torn down about as far as it's going to go. Fortunately, we don't have to take the body off of the frame. It's just too big, and I don't think it was designed to come apart. We got the old hydraulic pump out, which lightened the truck by about 10,000 pounds. And we need to get out this old rusted gas tank. Whoever thought it was a good idea to put a gas tank directly under the driver's butt in a fire truck had a sick sense of humor. Poor Chip has been standing on this truck for weeks, and we have not been able to get all this paint off. This old lacquer paint from the 40s, I think, would hold up to a nuclear blast. Fortunately, we don't have to always get it down to bare metal. As long as you have a reasonably flat surface, the special primer that we're going to use for the first round of priming is designed to fill in scratches and chips and sanding marks and other small surface imperfections. So we're going to get ready to prime it, but first, ugh. We gotta get this baby clean. Resist. I just had to. <laughs> I can't resist. We've got the first round of our special primer onto the fire truck. We kind of ran out of it, but we have enough of it on here to get a good start. And it did what it was supposed to do. It revealed places where we have bad metal. And this shows us where we're going to need to do some metal work to fix it. You can see we're actually chipping off down here because the primer doesn't adhere properly when the metal is bad. This primer is a lot like, you can think of it as spackle if you're fixing a wall at home. You put a layer on and then you sand it down and then you put another layer on and you sand it down until you have a nice perfect finish. That is what we do with this primer. So I am going to grab Reese and we're going to start sanding with a very special sandpaper. And we're not going to bother to do these step sides on the fire truck because we're going to cover them in diamond plate. It's gonna give this truck a really, really snazzy look. I'm excited about it. And I like the word snazzy. I think that's a good word for this. So I'm gonna grab Reese and we're gonna get to work. All right, we have a lot of sanding work to do. As you can see, we got the first layer on and this is a special kind of primer. It's called Slick Sand Poly Primer. Slick Sand Poly Primer. Can you say that three times fast? Slick sand poly primer, slick sand poly primer, slick sand poly primer. Hey! 
So it's kind of a special primer that it fills in you know, some of the surface imperfections, kind of like Spackle does, but you have to use a very low grit sandpaper and go very, very slowly over small areas. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to use, but the final results will be really pretty. So I need you to do the sanding and we have to do very, very small areas. You're not kidding. What, what is this? Yeah, you have to do very small areas. This looks so. like a stick of gum. I know, but I know it's gonna take a little bit longer, but this is just kind of how this primer works, so. Beauty is pain. Beauty is pain. All right, I'm gonna let you go to it. I'm gonna get a couple of these myself and I'm gonna start on the other side and we'll just see how much we can get done. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Yeah. This is bullshit. If you haven't figured it out, I'm totally punking Reese. You do not have to sand this primer with little tiny pieces of sandpaper. Honestly, I can't believe she fell for it. You can use totally normal sized sandpaper. So I think I'm gonna go rescue her before she kills me. I don't know why this fire truck is so special. We gotta use these stupid little gum sticks. To get this shit off of here. What the hell. Hey, how's it going? Oh yeah, what's wrong with this picture? Why, why am I using this? This takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> Is there some sort of special reason you'd like to fill me in on as to why we're using this little piece here? Because we love you. Yeah, screw you, Leanne. <laughs> Get out of here. I can't believe you fell for it. <laughs> Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> What you guys doing? Are you kidding me? You know, if you're gonna be riding around on that little scooter, you can at least go fetch us a pizza. I'm, uh, you got one, come on. <laughs> quack, quack, quack. <laughs> nice. Now I gotta go home and change, take a shower. Okay, yeah. Get us a pizza first. Bring a pizza if you're gonna do that. Hey, Leanne, you missed a spot right there. Most people don't realize that you have to sand primer. You can't just paint right over it. And when you sand it, it'll have this nice smooth feel. Check that out, Reese. Ooh, it's fresh. Yep. Like a baby's bum. And feel this, the difference here. This is still rough because we haven't sanded this one. Yeah, it's like a shark. It's rough on one side. It's smooth <laughs> on the other. <laughs> if you don't have the feel for it, a trick is to take a microfiber cloth and when you wipe a microfiber over a sanded area, it's just smooth as glass. But when you run it over an area that you haven't, it actually catches on the rough spot. So you can do that if you don't have a feel. One of the things we need to do is when we find little areas like this and like this where the metal is actually bad, we need to mark it with a piece of tape so that Vince will know where it is so that we can get some body filler on that because we're not going to be able to just cover that even with our magic primer. So I brought some tape. So start marking any spots that we have bad metal and that are going to need body filler. Is this the right size tape for the job? It is the right size tape, but okay. you can use any color. Okay. Taz likes this one and we have to use what he can handle. All right, well blue it is then. All right, let's go to work. Okay, Chip just got done cleaning the frame, the firewall, and all of the underneath parts of this truck. We're now gonna give it a coat of black zero rust. This stuff is just amazing. He basically just did this with a wire brush, didn't have to go too crazy with it, and all we gotta do is spray it on and be done. Put on my mask, and away we go.
using this stuff is that easy. I like it. While we were busy working on the fire truck, all of our parts came in for the 49 Plymouth project. The problem we have with the Plymouth is, well, it's from 1949, and it's not exactly a popular car, so we were having trouble finding parts for it. Fortunately, our friends up in Detroit at Classic to Current Fabrication made all of these parts for us. They custom fabricated the braces, the front and rear floor pans, and all of our trunk pans. So if you have an older car and you're struggling to find parts, check out the guys at C2C Fabrication because they will custom fabricate the parts you need at a very reasonable price. They also use veterans in their company, so it's a great way to get the parts for your old car and to support our veterans. So I'm gonna give these over to Vince and we're gonna get this Plymouth back together. Okay guys, now that we've got all the parts from CNC Fabrication, we're going to cut all this rotten metal out of the car. Um, if you remember, we braced the car first. This is definitely a must, especially for this. We're going to be cutting out the rocker panels, being that the floor is already gone. And keep in mind, the rocker panel is basically holding this car together right now, so be very careful as you do it. And as we said earlier, if the car drops, if the car makes a weird noise as you're cutting it, stop what you're doing and make sure that you don't have any structural problems. All right, let's get all this metal off. Okay, now, wow, more expanding foam. <laughs> wow, they went to town with this stuff. It is everywhere. Okay, now we're gonna have to fit the rocker panel on, uh, get it all traced out and then see where we have to trim the rest of the metal for them. And it's Taz and the Car Chick from the new hit online TV show, Rust Rescue. Come see us at Vegas at SEMA, November 5th to November 8th. We're going to be in the Zero Rust booth with our 1949 Plymouth project. It's the North Hall, booth 10779. Where, what is it again? 10779. It's right at the entrance to the North Hall in the collision repair area. Good, I won't get lost then. Exactly, but you know, if we're going to make it to SEMA by November, we have got a lot of work to do, so we will see y'all in Vegas. We're going to get back to work. Okay, once you get the metal all cleaned up, what you're going to want to do is clamp everything in place. Bring it as far in as you can. Use small vice grips and just basically clamp it in place this way. There is no guesswork involved in this. It is right where it needs to be. This will also hold it in place while you're welding. Make sure it's all flush. Okay. Now that we've got this in place, let's weld it in place.
now that Vince has the new rocker panels welded in and we actually have sides on this car, it's time to figure out where the braces go. Ideally, before you cut the braces out of the car originally, you would measure and take pictures so you know exactly where the mounting points were from the braces to the frame of the car. That wasn't really an option for us. Everything was so rusted out. And remember, we had that lovely expanding foam in the A-pillars and the rocker panels. So we're gonna have to go back and just remeasure from our frame back to where the braces go so we can figure that out. And we know we had the center brace that runs uh, across the center here between the two center pillars. So that's gonna be a good place to start. So we're gonna measure between the center pillar to the front mounting point here. This is just a seat brace, so we're not even gonna worry about that, it doesn't mount. And then from the center point back to our back point here at the end of the back seat. And I think we've got a mounting point in the trunk too, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. So I'm gonna grab Chip and a tape measure and head outside to where we've stored our frame, and measure those mounting points and see if we can't figure out where everything goes in here. All right, we have several different mounting points here. The front one here is near the engine compartment where we currently have the body sitting on our jack stands. This is the one that goes somewhere vaguely near the A-pillar. And then this is our center point. So we're gonna measure from the center of this mounting point over to here. And we've got exactly 36 inches. I like it when it comes out even. Now these front points, we are at to center 12 and a half inches and our rear points, you hold on to that chip. Oh, this is one of those annoying ones. It's about 29 and a quarter. All right, that should give us what we need to go inside and see where the braces line up in on the body. Since I'm visual, I used my immense artistic talent to draw a little diagram so I would know the measurements and where they go. So here's our center post. So from center to what used to be the A-pillar, we should have 36 inches. So if you can hold that for me, please. All right, so 36 comes to right here. So that's where the brace is gonna have to come in. Ouch. So that's gonna need to mount up right about there. All right. And here, slide down there. Put that in the middle of where the back one is. All right, that's perfect. We've got our 29 and a quarter, so those line up perfectly. We got lucky. All right. Before we can weld this brace in, we have the center part of the old brace left and our folks at C2C gave us the left and right hand sides that go with it because we couldn't use those. So we're gonna have to create a place to actually mount this to because as you can see, we have no metal. If you remember, this was where all the expanding foam was, and we've got, we got nothing, nothing. So Vince is going to need to fabricate a box here. We've got some good metal to weld to there, but he's gonna have to fabricate a whole piece and make a new box around here. He's gonna be thrilled. Chip, I'm gonna let you go tell him. Okay, now that we've got the temp piece in place, um, 
there's like nothing there, so I still have to build a box to go underneath here to seal this A pillow off. This <laughs> is a mess. I did not realize it was this bad, but it's too late now, so piece by piece, we're gonna just have to build the bottom piece, trim all this, but you always have to put a 10 piece, piece in just to make sure that everything lines up. From point to point, exactly 30 inches, 36 inches, I'm sorry. Well, Vince is finishing up the fabrication of the parts we need on the bottom of the Plymouth. I'm gonna go ahead and get the frame coated and protected in Zero Rust. Zero Rust comes in your traditional paint cans, but it also comes in these handy spray cans. These are better for smaller applications, not a whole car frame, but I may actually use this on the railing for my house, on my porch, it's getting kind of rusty. They also come in four different colors. The traditional black, which is what we're gonna use on the frame, but they also come in a red oxide, a gray, and a white. So you got a choice of what you're gonna use. I'm gonna use the black and you can either apply it with the spray can, you can apply it with a paint brush, just like we did on our 77 Trans Am project, or you can use a paint gun. Because we're trying to get ready for SEMA really fast, I need to get this done. So I am going to use our paint gun. Now, if you're using it with a brush or the spray can, you just apply it straight. But if you're gonna use a paint gun, you need to reduce it by 10 to 20% with a VOC exempt solvent like acetone. So I'm gonna go get this mixed up, grab my paint gun and my mask and head outside and start painting this frame. I am going to coat the springs here in the white and then do the rear axle with the red just to have a little bit of variety. We'll see what happens. have the frame coated in zero rest, so we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, why don't we sit down and figure out what it costs us so far to do this. Good idea. Well, I know we spent a thousand dollars on the Plymouth originally. How much did we spend on the floor pans and rocker panels from C2C Fabrication? Uh, their bill was about four ninety, I believe. Okay, that's not bad at all, and we spent about 72 bucks on that gallon of zero rest, but we only used a little more than half of it and then we use the other half on the fire truck. So right. let's just say about 40 bucks on zero rust. So mm -hmm. we do the math, that puts us at 1530 so far on mm -hmm. the Plymouth. Right. And that leaves us about 84, 70 left. So we've got a lot of money left, but a lot of work left to do. Right, we still have to put a motor in it. We have to put a transmission in it. Details, details. Yeah. I think the first thing though I need to do is to go back to my office and start looking for parts because we're going to need a steering box we're going to need all the brakes all the suspension components and as of right now the rear brakes are locked i can't get the car oh, rolled, so <laughs> we're going to have to do something i mean so you have to look for brake hubs look okay. for brake shoes that type and hardware because i'll guarantee it's probably rotted out and so oh i'm sure yeah well so. while i'm at it i will also start looking for a drivetrain for our fire truck because i think we're ready to put the engine and transmission in that baby yep we I'm need that and we that. need a wiring harness oh and a wiring harness okay yep. Why don't I go back to my office and do that while you put zero rust on the all those floor pans you put in. Yep. That way it'll be ready to go. We'll get it. Yeah, that's the best thing. And then we can uh, go to the next step, which is going to be fun. All right. I'm out of here. All right. Ugh. I'm going back to work. 